Hey everyone, thanks so much for joining me here today. Today we are going to remove this crossbar grill from the front of my Fox Body Mustang. And we are going to do a grill delete uh, with this kit that I bought from Late Model Restoration. All right, so this piece from Late Model Restoration, it's made out of fiberglass and it's got a primer or a little gel coat on it already. In order to fit this in, you can see that it's mainly this crossbar that we need to remove. And it looks like this uh, sort of little support piece for the grill also needs to come out. Uh, I'm gonna start by just removing this, uh, cutting away this uh, cross piece here. And then we're gonna see um, what it looks like. I'm actually really, really happy with the way that this turned out. The cuts are nice and smooth. I'm just gonna grab my uh, piece and let's just see how this is gonna fit in there. So I can see right off the bat, it's contacting here and it's gonna need to be trimmed away. I think it will clear this piece here um, when the time comes, but this sort of bump here is gonna need to come out for sure. And it looks like I'm probably going to need to trim back up here a little bit better. This actually worked pretty well. The gap between the bottom of this uh, cross piece here and the top of that little hump uh, was actually perfectly the size of this cutting disc, so that's pretty cool. Uh, let's try to fit that part and let's see where we're at. So it feels like we're pretty good. I'm gonna shape these openings a little bit more. This time I'm just gonna continue to use the Dremel tool. Um, there may be a little bit of uh, interference here as well, but we'll take a look at that as we get a little bit closer. finally fits. Uh, as you can see, I had to trim these uh, notches here a little bit. Maybe that you call those the ears on the insert or on the delete kit. Um, I also took a lot more material out of here than I had originally planned to, but it does appear now that um, when I put this in place that um, I'll probably need to use something to hold it in while the adhesive dries. Uh, tape or something like that, but it does appear that it should fit nice and tight. So the next steps are really just to kind of smooth this off, sand it down, you know, rough this up so that the adhesive has a place to grip. Um, and then of course I need to get this painted. So I'm going to go ahead and do that now.
All right, well, we are here now here for the final step where we're actually going to take the grill delete kit and put it in here. So let's just talk about prep a little bit. Both surfaces have been sanded with 80 grit and cleaned really well with soap and water and then rinsed. The next step for us to do is gonna be to use a degreaser cleaner on here. Um, my adhesive manufacturer recommends one. And then you're gonna use an adhesion promoter uh, and then you will actually put your adhesive on. So I'm gonna go ahead and do those two steps right now. This piece fits okay. And if you weren't using the adhesive, um, if you were just using this, the double-sided tape that came with it, you wouldn't need to go through all of the sanding and prepping. You know, you would just wipe it down with a cleaner degreaser uh, and then use a little bit of the adhesion promoter that they send in the pack for the tape. Um, but I would say, you know, if this was a show car for you, this is probably the kind of thing that you would want to actually take that front bumper cover off and take it to a professional to install. Even with all of the fitting that I did here, there's a, a real sort of odd gap here that would be really nice to have blended in. And um, if this was a show car, I think there would be some things that you might want to do differently. In addition to the adhesive, there are two holes here that allow you to drill into the top of that and pin it in place. The adhesive that I'm using is from Evercoat. It's the Maxim Plastic Repair System 100887. It's a bond fill um, timer. It says it's a one to three minute um, work time, uh, 20 to 30 minute sand time, and then a one hour cure time. So we don't have a whole lot of time to sort of muck around. So uh, you want to do all your trial fitting first, make sure that you're basically ready to go. Uh, before you start to mix and pour this stuff. It's also really um, got all kinds of warnings on it uh, about breathing and touching. So I'm gonna throw my respirator on and I'm gonna wear um, some yellow rubber gloves uh, just to stay safe. Now that I'm almost ready, there is one other thing I was just gonna show you is how this works. So uh, a lot of auto body adhesives and repair materials require like special dispensing guns and they can be quite expensive. One of the things that I really like about this product is that you can just use a standard silicone gun or like construction adhesive gun. You screw this cap off and then you take out this plug and then your tips are actually mixing tips. The way that this works is that you'll squeeze out just a little bit of material into the cardboard from here, add your mixing tip and then you'll squeeze it out. Now, in the instructions um, that I've seen online, typically what you do is you squeeze it out onto like a mixing board and then you pick it up and you move it um, with, a, with a spreader, with a plastic spreader onto your work surface. Because I have such a large surface here to do, uh, what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna mix, spread it out on here and then spread it around with my, with my uh, plastic spreader. And I'm gonna do the same on the back side. Then I'm gonna try and place the middle and I'll tape it down and um, go to the edges and sort of hold it all in place for the time that I need to hold it down for. So um, let's get ready. I'm really excited to do this. There you have it, that is the finished product. So you can probably tell in the 
part of the video where I was putting the adhesive on that it was quite a bit runnier than I thought that it was going to be and I actually ended up making quite a mess. I should have done a lot of extra masking to prevent any seepage from getting onto the rest of the bumper. Um, I also got a little bit of it on my gloves and I left fingerprints on this so as a result I ended up actually having to do some sanding and repaint sort of the whole top part of this front bumper um, which is too bad um, but for me at least it wasn't a huge deal because the car has a uh, mostly a rattle can paint job on it anyway. If you had a show car that you were doing this on, um, you may want to try a different method of attaching it or be really, really, really careful. The Grill Delete did come with double-sided tape, and I honestly don't know how well that would work if you stuck with just that as an attachment method. Um, my bumper, which is in pretty good shape, had some sort of little waves in it uh, just from, you know, 30 years of being out in the sun and um, I, I don't know how well the tape would really hold for that. I had to put quite a bit of pressure on it to, to get all those gaps in and all sealed up. I am really happy with the finished product. I thought that it, uh, I think that it looks great um, and the quality of the piece was good but I do just question how well that double-sided tape would work. I have seen other videos where people have used like epoxy to do this. Um, and that might work as well, although I always question how well um, epoxies will mix with two different, uh, like off-the-shelf epoxies would mix with two different types of uh, plastics with the urethane and the fiberglass. So anyway, this is what the uh, late model restoration gr Fox Body Grill Delete looks like on a Mustang LX. I'm really happy with the project and I hope that you enjoyed this video. If you did, uh, please subscribe to the channel if you haven't already. Uh, hit that bell for to receive notifications and uh, if you like the video, please give it a thumbs up and uh, we'll talk to you again soon